before I start, I, I know Brother Zafar said this will be five minutes. I don't think any of them have been five minutes. But if anyone is concerned, I will ask the Imams just to reduce their surahs perhaps or quicken the spe uh, speed if anyone has any worries. But inshallah, my nasiya or reminder will be brief inshallah. Um, however, it relates to an incident of the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, the bit that I want everyone here to focus on isn't necessarily the incident itself, but it's the lesson that the mashaykhs give us. Because the wisdom of the mashaykhs and the supremacy of the scholars of Tazkiyah is that they dive into the oceans of Hadith, they dive into the oceans of Quran and the oceans of Sirah to understand what is a lesson for us. How does, how does this apply to our lives in attaining closeness to Allah? They're not interested in theories, they're not interested in stories. For them it's always the relevance of how will this make me or you closer to Allah. And that's what the focus should be. And the incident which I'm going to speak about is one that many of you are aware of. And that's the incident of Ta'if. When the Prophet ﷺ went to the neighbouring town. Now many of you will be aware that in the books of Sirah, that year, or when that happened, is known as the year of sorrow. And the reason that it's known as the year of sorrow is that two people that the Prophet ﷺ was very close to passed away. One was Abu Talib, his uncle, and the other was Hazrat Hadija radiallahu anha herself. And of her, books can be written about her loyalty to the Prophet ﷺ. But one statement the Prophet ﷺ said about her was that the love he has for her was the love that Allah placed in his heart. Now, look at, and again, the wisdom of the mashaykhs, look at the tragedy occurs in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, and what does he do? He goes even further in da'wah and goes to Ta'if. Because one thing the books will never mention is who is left behind in Makkah. The books don't mention of Fatima Tazar anha, Ruqayya, Zainab, Umm Kalthum anha, the daughters of the Prophet. Were they not in need of the Prophet when, his, when their blessed mother passed away? Of course they were. But the Prophet recognizes that the Ummah is in greater need. So the Prophet goes to Ta'if. And he spends 30 days calling people to who? To Allah and his messenger. Telling them about heaven and telling them about hell. Now for 30 days he does da'wah and not one person comes to Islam. And then we think about when we spend a day in Bolton giving out leaflets and someone shuns us how much we feel and how dejected we feel. The Prophet spent 30 days calling people to Islam and not one person accepted. And instead... As he's returning back to Mecca, the people of Taif start mocking him. They start throwing stones at him with such severity and such force that the Prophet's skin is cut, that he begins to bleed. With such severity and such force that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to take refuge under a tree and he actually has to raise his hands. That's the severity which, to which these pebbles are being thrown. In that state, sandals full with blood, bruised with these stones, who comes to him? And we know that there's a beautiful exchange between Allah and the Prophet ﷺ. But that's not the, what I'm going to speak about. But during that vulnerability, at that point, the Prophet ﷺ is behind, at, by this tree. Jibra'il Islam comes. And I quote in my own words to paraphrase. Jibra'il Islam comes to the Prophet ﷺ and says, O Prophet, the heavens are raging with the anger of Allah. Give the word and Allah will wipe this nation as he has wiped nations before. Now, there's many of you here that are sitting at the gaff, that are accessing the spiritual world. Can you imagine what's going on in the spiritual world? Do you think Mika'il al-Islam is not ready with tornadoes and hurricanes? Do you not think the volcanoes and the earth was ready to swallow up these people? But they are all waiting for the ashara of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Even Allah, who has to ask no one, gives other to his beloved by asking him first. Now, take all this into account and know this, and this is a lesson that I want you to focus on, that the mashaykhs, that the scholars of Tazkiyah that are concerned about you and I, they say that when you commit a sin, that that hurts the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than the stones of life. Now you have to ask yourself that question, really think about it. And it makes sense, does it not? Because why did the Prophet incur those stones? 
so he could deliver this very message. The message that says, please lower your gaze. The message that says, don't commit fraud with these hands. The message that says, don't curse with this tongue. That is why he incurred the stone. So of course, when his ummah commits those sins that he bled for, will it, of course it will hurt the Prophet ﷺ more. So now I'm looking at all of you now, and I can see emotion, and I can see the angst that it causes us, and I can see love. But again, what the mashaikhs do, they give us solutions. Because what do I now do with all this emotion? Is this about gearing and on the light of what could be Laylatul Qadr to bring passion in you and then just let you go on your way? Absolutely not. Because what the mashaikhs teach you that for everything, this emotion that you're feeling, there is a solution to that emotion. And there is such a solution that rather than calling, causing pain to the Prophet that you can bring a smile to his blessed face. Now I ask each and every single one of you here, raise your hands if you're someone that doesn't want to cause pain to the Prophet Don't look to your right, don't look to your left. Whether you're viewing online or whether you're upstairs or downstairs, raise your hands. Now, if I was to tell you how many of you want to know how you can stop causing pain to the Prophet raise your hands. And don't do partial, I want to see a full raise. We claim when the Nats are played that we don't want to harm the Prophet Now, that's the majority of this room. Now, brothers, viewers, upstairs and downstairs, this is exactly what we teach here at the Zabia. We have a solution that will stop you causing pain, stop me causing pain to the Prophet of Allah. And for those who want to go the next step, we have a solution so you can bring a smile to the face of the Prophet, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now here's the sacrifice. A sacrifice for me and a sacrifice for you. I make a promise that tomorrow at, I was going to say 10.30, but I need to have a bit of food. And as you can see, I do consume. Uh, at 10.35, I will be here tomorrow with a cup of tea. And anyone that wants to learn that path, I will spend 10, 15 minutes, just all it will take, to teach you how we can avoid, and myself as a reminder, cause pain to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now that's a promise I'm making you. Now it's up to you, because as Ramadan's coming to an end, we're all going to be making an assessment. Has this been a successful Ramadan? But brothers, viewers, it's not you to determine whether you've had a successful Ramadan, it's for Allah to determine whether you've had a successful Ramadan. And one of those ways is to see whether there's going to be a change. So like I said, I will be here tomorrow at 10.35 with a cup of tea. And anyone, every single one of you who raised your hands, upstairs, downstairs, 90% of this room wanted a solution. Now whether all of you turn up, that's 100 plus, or whether one person turns up, or whether no one turns up, I will be here and I will go through that path. Inshallah. I pray that inshallah that you forgive me for my shortcomings. Anything good that has been said, it is attributed to the Mashaikhs, the Prophet of Allah and Allah Himself. Any deficiencies are from myself. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayhi.